Hey guys, so today I'm going to be quickly looking at a nano core loader that I've obtained from Malware Bazaar. So I've already downloaded it from the site, unzipped it, created a copy, and here it is ready to go. So since it's a VBS script, which is text based, I'm just going to open that up in a text editor. I like to use Notepad++, but you can use anything you like that has regex support. And taking a look at the script, First thing we can see is all of these comments, which just look like random strings, they're junk, and they don't really provide any value. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see some vari variables being created and some strings being assigned, but they still kind of look like junk and nothing really valuable. We scroll down throughout the code, more variables being created. And if we keep looking, we can eventually see these strings which look like they're part of another VBS script. And we can see that because we can see more variable names, what looks like a function name, and just text that in general looks like code. So the way I'm going to deal with this is I'm going to use regex to remove those comments. And since each comment starts with a single quote, I'm going to specify a single quote. I'm going to say that I want to grab, remove everything that comes after the quote. So I'm going to use a dot and then all. And I also want to remove the new line that comes after each of the comments. So I'm going to add a backslash s. And I'm going to add a plus just in case there's extra space there for a double new line. And also because the quotes are always at the beginning of a line, I'm going to specify that with a caret. Now if I hit replace all, hopefully that should remove all the comments. And yeah, it looks like it's worked. Cool. If we look at the result, we can see some more. More suspicious strings, impersonation level, impersonate, roots, mv2, select all from win32 local time. Nothing super suspicious. And if we continue scrolling, we can start to see those strings that look like they're forming a next stage. And what I generally like to do is take the most obfuscated or the most interesting piece of a script, isolate that, work on that, and then work backwards from there. And that saves the time of trying to reverse engineer every single one of these lines of code, which most of the time don't do anything malicious. They may add some functionality, but it's not something super important. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of the lines of code that are associated with this P5. And I'm going to copy those into a new file. It looks like there's no more past this point, with the exception of this empty one here. So I'm going to grab those, open up a new file paste them in, and I'm going to enable some text highlighting. And with word wrap enabled, this is still a little bit difficult to read, so I'm going to turn word wrap off. And now it's a bit easier to see where the strings are all being added together. Now we can see we still have these variables being added in, which don't really seem to do much. So I'm going to go ahead and just manually remove those. And it looks like that leaves us with just the strings that look like they're part of the next script. Just 
excuse the plane going past. And since all the strings are added together, one after one, it doesn't really matter. We don't have to worry about order. We can just go ahead and delete. Use a search and replace. I'm going to go ahead and remove all of those P5s. And I'm going to change that, turn that off from regex just to make that a bit easier. And now we're left with just the strings that look like they're part of the next file. And since they're all going to be added together, I'm going to go ahead and remove the quotes that are at the beginning and the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab any quote at the end of a line, followed by any white space, which is going to grab a new line, and followed by another quote. Turn back on regular expression, replace all, and now we have a single line containing all of the next stage of code. So I'm going to turn, because that's all in one line, difficult to read, I'm going to turn word wrap back on. And I'm going to add, manually add a few new lines just to make that a bit easier. Give it a little bit of separation. What stands out here is this restored function, which looks like it's being called repeatedly throughout the code. And following each function looks like there appears to be an obfuscated string. Yeah, every time restored is called, there's a string. Which doesn't seem to make any sense. But if we highlight that restored again, go up to the top of the code, we can see where the function is defined. Again, it's a little bit difficult to read, so what I'm going to do is take... Just going to add some new lines in here just to make it a little bit easier. And yeah, we can see the function takes one argument, sets a variable to eight, sets a variable to seven. It does something up to the input length. And then it adds a value to this number seven. And that value is, it looks like it's for number eight. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead, start renaming some of these variables just so the code is easier to read. So we know that toffee menu is the first argument to the function. So I'm just going to rename that as arg1. We know that this is the number eight. So I'm going to rename that as 8. This looks like some kind of counter, so I'm just going to rename that as counter. Really doesn't matter what you rename it to as long as it makes some kind of sense. I'm going to guess that this is the output. It looks like that's what everything is being added onto. And it looks like that's the variable that's being returned at the end. And I'm going to go ahead and add a new line. That might break the code, but it makes, makes the experience much easier to read while we're still in a text editor. Now, if we look at that function again, starting with a number eight and a number seven, it's iterating up until the end of whatever the, whatever the input is. It's going up by 8 upon every loop. And it's taking a string and adding it to the output. Taking one character and adding it to the output. Every 8 characters. So 
So what I think it's doing is it's grabbing one of these strings. And it's taking every eighth character and returning it. So I can test this out using another regex. And some capture groups. And we can say grab one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Grab any blob of eight characters. Capture the last one. Yeah, grab any blob of eight characters, ignore the first seven, keep the last one, and then just replace the entire eight character blob with the last value. So this is a capture group. And this syntax is used to return the first value it's within brackets. So if we go ahead and replace all, hey, we get a Google Drive address which I presume is hosting the next stage of this malware. Now if we go ahead, we can see there's a that decoding function is called one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a bunch of times throughout the code. And we can also see that every time that function is called, there's a single quote and then a bunch of random strings. So what we can do is we can grab the entire script and throw it into CyberChef and just grab out those quoted values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use a regular expression to grab any single quotes followed by anything that's not a single quote. And then ending with another single quote. And if we leave the default of highlight matches, we can scroll through the code and make sure that that's matching correctly. And it looks like this. So what we can do now is we can change. We don't actually want to return the quotes in our output, so we can add a capture group. And that tells the regex we only want what's in the brackets, which in this case is what, which is whatever is between the quotes. Now, if we go ahead and change this to list capture groups, we can get a list of just the encoded strings. Now I want to decode each string individually. So I'm going to change, I'm going to add in a fork operation. And that just says every time there's a new line, Treat the string as an entirely new string. Don't try to combine it with whatever was captured before. Now, knowing that, we can add another find and replace and essentially use the same technique as before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Capture any blob of eight characters. Only keep the last one and replace the blob with only that last character. So if we go ahead and hit bake. Yeah, it looks like we're able to get all of the decoded strings. So I'm gonna copy those out, jump back into Notepad++, and paste them all in. And here we can see the address, which I presume is where the next stage of the malware is being downloaded from. See a reference to IEX, uh, which is used to execute code. We can see PowerShell. We can see that the Windows directory is used. We can see a reference to bits transfer, which might be how it's downloaded from Google. And we can see a reference to from base 64 string, sleep, get content, substring, 
and so on, so on. So since all of these strings were encoded, I'm going to assume that this is the primary function of the code, which just using these decoded values, we can kind of determine that that is, it's probably going to download something from a Google Drive. Whatever it's downloading is probably going to be base64 encoded. The download is going to take place using the bits protocol. It's probably going to save it to the Windows directory. It's going to enumerate running processes. And then it's probably going to execute whatever it downloaded using IEX. So it's probably a PowerShell script. And potentially whatever it's downloading. The interesting part is going to be between this number and this number. So the script that it downloads might be partially junk and partially a PowerShell script. And yeah, there you go. That's how you would decode this particular script. Find out what it's doing and get the address that it's going to download the next stage of malware from.